Thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, good morning. My name is Deirdre Denman, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for WonderWare California. Thank you for attending our Learn in 30 webinar today focused on setting up in-touch remote access. After the webinar this morning, we will be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the QA box, the chat box, or email us at webinar at california.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce you to your presenter for today, Mike Lapitan. Mike is an automation industry expert who has been a WonderWare California product specialist for the past 11 years. So without further ado, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our Learn in 30, Setting Up Remote Access to InTouch. One of the more commonly asked questions I get, and so it's great to be able to present this to you today. <clears throat> okay. So our agenda is we'll do a brief WonderWare California introduction, and then I'll do a demo on what the user experience looks like using InTouch Access Anywhere. And then we'll do a review on setting up uh, InTouch and remote desktop services for remote access. And then we will do a overview on security and uh, do a brief demo on the new InTouch web client as well. And we'll have time for Q&A afterwards, so please uh, feel free to enter any questions you have into the chat box and we'll address those at the end of the webinar. So some background on Wonderware. Wonderware has been around since 1987, so for over 30 years, Wonderware has been the, the market-leading SCADA software globally. One-third of the world's plants use Wonderware. It's a very low-risk solution and proven, easy to use with tremendous support both locally as well as the Wonderware development uh, and, and uh, factory technical support is located in Southern California and Lake Forest, so it's all local and over a million licenses installed in the market. So an incredible amount of Wonderware installed out there and market-leading technology and security and scalability. So the ability to grow with you over time and add functional capabilities such as remote access as needed. And Wonderware is a Schneider Electric Company, which is a $26 billion uh, global specialist in efficiency technologies. So lots of investment in Wonderware these days by uh, Schneider Electric. Wonderware California is your local resource for all Wonderware and SCADA related questions. We've been doing this since 1992 and so we support um, over a thousand customers here in California alone. We've got local training both in our San Francisco and Irvine offices. Uh, we offer free workshops out of those offices as well. Those are free half-day introductory events, so please uh, check out our website, california.wonderware.com, to uh, look at our upcoming events. In San Francisco next week, we have a event on InTouch Machine Edition. And again, those are free events, and they're hands-on in our training facility. So it's a great opportunity to see what it looks like to actually use Wonderware and, and do some development. We have local technical support. We get uh, reviews from our, our customers uh, all the time that our tech support is hands down the, the best support that uh, for any products they use. And a lot of times that's why customers prefer to use Wonderware is because it's the best supported product. You can get your questions answered today and get resolutions to your questions. We also offer professional IT services, so if you're looking for computers or servers or virtual, virtualized systems, you're not sure where to start or how to get your project fast-tracked, we can help you with that as well uh, by installing um, the Wonderware pre-installed on, on servers and computers. Um, even doing a remote access setups, if you, if you need help, if you don't have necessarily an IT department to help you, we can answer your questions and help you get started with uh, some remote access if you, if you don't have an IT department. And then we work with 120 registered system integrators here in California. So uh, if you work with a, a registered system integrator here, they'll be um, familiar with these capabilities on uh, setting up in-touch remote access, and uh, they do a great job of supporting our customers. So let's do a quick demo. Um, InTouch Access Anywhere is the ability to access InTouch from a web browser on whatever device you happen to be needing to access InTouch from, so whether that be your laptop, from your desktop, from an iPhone, from an Android, from a tablet. Uh, all of those devices have built-in web browsers, such as Safari or Internet Explorer, or Edge, or Chrome. Firefox, all of those are supported browsers with InTouch Access Anywhere. 
And so let's do a, uh, a quick demo of what that looks like. So I'm going to open up Chrome here, and I'm going to go to a public web page. And you can go to this web page at any point in time as well, called InTouchAccessAnywhere.com. InTouchAccessAnywhere.com will take you to a registration page. And uh, you can just put in your information there and click Explore the demo. And then what it's going to do is it's going to tell you what the username and password are to use for logging into the demo. So the username is Mobile One, the password is Wonderware One. And if you're logging in from a workstation, go ahead and click Workstation. And so here is the uh, screen that you will get when you use InTouch Access Anywhere with your plant. This is when you go to a web page, you will just enter your username, Mobile One, your password. Type in Wonderware One, and I can select my InTouch application that I want to access. In this case, I only have one, so I'll click Connect, and it's going to start InTouch. And I didn't have to install anything on my computer, anything on my iPhone, anything on my my laptop in order to do this. I simply just went to a web page, and we'll get into the details of how that all works. But now I've got my full InTouch application with no compromise. 100% of the InTouch functionality you use today is supported with InTouch Access Anywhere, now accessible through a web browser. So we've got our situational awareness graphics, our trend pens, some of our orchestra graphics. We can go look at uh, some of these other dashboards we have. Maybe I'm in a manufacturing environment and I want to look at OEE, overall equipment effectiveness. Or I want to go log into my tank farm and look at the current statuses of all of my tanks. Maybe I've got a nice, pretty uh, bottling line screen here in this case. We'll open this one up and check out our, uh, our bottling line. And uh, we'll go ahead and open up our water filter. If we've got a water operation, we're trying to access our water system from the field or from home. We get an alarm. We need to log in and see what's going on in the plant. Does it justify us driving in? Do we need to get on the phone with anybody? Do we need to drive into the plant? So all these things are available right from a web browser. Okay. And then when I'm done with uh, InTouch from my device, I simply just close the browser and it disconnects me from InTouch. Okay, so how does this all work? So currently there's three ways that a user can log in to remote desktop services uh, and run InTouch. So you can log in to remote desktop, a remote desktop server uh, from a Windows desktop just using a remote desktop connection. I'll show you what that looks like if you're not familiar with remote desktop. Uh, that's typically going to be from your um, your Windows operating system. It's got a remote desktop connection application that allows you to remote into a, a server and, and run in touch. Okay, if you are on a, um, a phone or tablet with an iOS or an Android operating system, uh, there's no native um, remote desktop app typically installed on those operating systems. You have to download an app from the, the, the app store. Uh, for example, a free one from Microsoft is Microsoft RD Client, Microsoft Remote Desktop Client. That will allow you to enter in the, um, the server name and um, your login credentials so that you can remote desktop into um, your server that's running InTouch and access InTouch from your phone. And then we have InTouch Access Anywhere, which allows you to log in to InTouch from any device using a web browser, which is what I just showed you. So that's the most convenient way, simply because you don't have to uh, manage all the different devices, uh, which, which devices are Windows-based devices, and, and have to teach, you have to teach a user on how to, to start the remote desktop app, uh, or um, on, a, on a mobile device, having to download and install a remote desktop app and, and can, can figure that and set that up. So there's a little bit of IT administration and uh, potential um, inconsistency or confusion maybe on behalf of users on, on how to, um, to get into their InTouch server. So everybody knows how to go to a web page, and that's why InTouch Access Anywhere is so great. Um, it's very simple for um, uh, anybody to just log into a web page. So what is Remote Desktop Services, RDS? Remote Desktop Services is a role in the Microsoft Server Operating System that you can install. Um, the current Microsoft Server Operating Systems are Windows Server 2012 and Server 2016. 
Uh, remote Desktop Services, once you install that role, allows multiple users to log into a server simultaneously and run independent sessions, in this case, of InTouch. So what that means is if you've got, say, three people that need to log in from the field and from home into InTouch, and they want to look at different screens at the same time, they can do that with Remote Desktop Services and, and InTouch. So they get independent sessions. They don't have to share the control of the mouse and the desktop and, and fight over what screen they're looking at. They get independent sessions of InTouch. So there's other third-party apps out there that just do desktop sharing. And so everybody who logs into the server has to share control of the mouse, share control of the desktop. That means if somebody's locally uh, using InTouch at the plant and then you uh, do a desktop sharing app from uh, remotely, that local operator is going to lose control of their mouse as you, as you take control over it. And so um, for some folks, that's okay. Um, but oftentimes we see that people outgrow um, that solution and, and people need independent access. Uh, the other benefit is that you can run multiple different InTouch applications on the server, and so people that are remoting in can access different InTouch applications. So somebody might just need to see the water plant, somebody might need to see the wastewater plant, um, uh, somebody might need a supervisor type uh, application, somebody might need a full operator application. So you can have different InTouch applications running on the same server, and multiple users can access whichever InTouch application is appropriate for them. So how is that different than just remote desktop protocol with like a Windows 10 computer, a, Windows, a workstation operating system? Uh, well, workstation operating systems, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, only allow one user to be logged in at a time. So that means if a local user is logged in to the computer and running in touch, and you remotely remote desktop in as a different user into that, into that computer, you're going to log off the local user. And so that's not very desirable if somebody's locally operating it. So remote desktop is good if, if uh, maybe it's your own personal PC at work and you need to log in from home and, uh, and take control of the desktop. There's nobody locally at that desktop that you're logging off. So Windows Server operating systems allow as many users as you have licenses and resources for. So, you know, such as memory or RAM, you might uh, want some additional RAM if you've got, say, you know, 10, 15 users logging into the same server. Okay, so what is required for InTouch access anywhere? Well, from a licensing standpoint, um, InTouch and Supervisory Client version 2017 licensing includes InTouch access anywhere. There's nothing you need to specify or add. It's just included with all new InTouch and Supervisory Client licenses starting in 2017. Uh, InTouch access anywhere is supported um, back to InTouch version 2012 R2 and newer, and it requires an InTouch RDS concurrent license. From a Windows Server Operating System standpoint, you have to install the RDS role, and the server needs to be a member of an Active Directory domain to have the RDS role. And then you also need Microsoft RDS CALs, which stand for Client Access Licenses. So um, for as many users you have logging in, you'll need that many Microsoft RDS CALs. Okay, and then the InTouch licensing is concurrent. So if you've got maybe a total of 10 people that, that may need to log in at any given time, but, but, um, but you only have maybe five people on the shift, then you would just need five licenses, and uh, the 10, 10 people would share those five licenses. So it's all concurrent-based. Okay, so installing the RDS role uh, starts in the Windows Server operating system. And you go to the server manager, and you go up to manage, and you click add roles and features. And the installation type is going to be a remote desktop services installation. And you'll install the remote desktop connection broker, web access, and the session host. And it will prompt you that remote desktop licensing um, has not been configured. That's a separate configuration uh, that we won't go in through, into in this uh, webinar. But you do get 120 days um, uh, that will enable um, remote desktop users to log in and um, before you actually license the server. So you get a grace period there. Uh, just don't forget to actually install your Microsoft RDS licenses because after 120 days, um, you'll only be able to have the default uh, two users be able to log in at the same time. Uh, which is the, the standard um, server operating system um, and what it allows you to do without additional Microsoft licensing. 
Okay. Next, you need to uh, specify the remote desktop host and user groups. So we go back into the server manager, go to remote desktop services, and we create what's called the session collections. See that highlighted there? And when we create a uh, session host, you're just identifying um, which uh, computers are going to have the um, are going to be remote desktop servers. And then you're going to specify your user groups. So you're going to put um, all of your uh, users that have that that you want to have access to the um, to the server. You're going to put them in a in a group. And so you'll select those groups that have access to the servers. And then finally, you'll create, uh, and then with uh, the InTouch Access Anywhere installation, when you run the, um, uh, the installation for Wonderware, uh, you run the setup.exe, and you'll simply just select the checkbox for InTouch Access Anywhere. If you're going to use the InTouch Access Anywhere Secure Gateway, that would be installed on a separate operating system, and we'll go into more detail what the Secure Gateway is. But initially, you'll just install the InTouch Access Anywhere server. And then you'll need to go into your firewall settings and allow um, the uh, exception for InTouch Access Anywhere to get through your firewall. So you'll click Allow Another App. And you'll choose um, from this directory here under the InTouch Access Anywhere folder the Access Server 64. So that's to, to allow that firewall exception for this app. Okay. Then inside of uh, your InTouch Application Manager under Node Properties, you can uh, set the InTouch application to automatically convert to um, dynamically change the resolution to convert to your screen video resolution. So what that means is that, you know, if your application was built for um, a certain resolution, um, then when you go to display that on a on a device that has a different resolution, Window Viewer will automatically resize InTouch to display um, to fit the device. So uh, basically, it will dynamically change uh, the size of the InTouch application to fit the the screen of your device. Otherwise, you can you can um, specify the resolution you want it to always show or or use the um, the the resolution the application was built in. So you have those options there. All right, so we'll go ahead and demo this. And so we're going to um, RDP, first of all, just RDP into the server and start InTouch, which is only required once for the initial setup. And then we'll uh, disconnect, and then we will browse to the InTouch Access Anywhere web page from uh, Chrome in this case. And the default web page is your server name or IP address, colon 8080. And then you can select your InTouch application and log in, and you're running. So. First thing I'll do is I'll show you how to do a basic remote desktop connection. From your uh, uh, Windows um, desktop, you can go open up remote desktop connection. So every Windows operating system has this remote desktop connection. And in this case, I'm going to put in my IP address of my uh, server that, um, that has in touch. You can also put in your computer name, but I've got the IP address. So I'll connect. And I'm going to go ahead and log in as the administrator. And I'll log in. Okay, so now I'm logged into a separate computer. Right, so now I've actually got a, um, a server computer I'm logged into. So if I come here to my PC and go to Properties, I can actually see I've got a Windows Server 2016, whereas pre previously I was on my Windows 10 computer. So now I'm logged into my uh, my demo server here, and I'll go ahead and start InTouch. So I'll go ahead and go to InTouch. And then I've got my, here's my list of applications. And so by starting uh, this application, uh, now um, when I log in through Intouch Access Anywhere, it will know the available applications um, when I log in. So you only have to do this once, um, just to do the initial setup, just do a um, traditional remote desktop uh, login. Okay, so now it's launching my Intouch uh, demo. Okay. Here it goes. It's loading for the first time. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and log off. So I'm going to go to um, I, uh, I'm going to click disconnect. So I'm disconnecting from my remote desktop session. All right. Now what I can do is I can go to my web page. So I'm going to go to uh, get on back now on my Windows 10 computer, my laptop, and I've bookmarked my um, my web page. So I've got one where it touch access anywhere. And now I'm going to log in with that same username and my password. 
And now I can select the available and such applications that are on my server. I can also choose um, how I want the InTouch to be displayed. Do I want it to fit uh, to full screen or do I want it to fit within the browser? So I have these options or I can use the native application resolution. So I'm going to have InTouch go into full screen. And so I'll click connect and here we go. Now I'm running InTouch from a browser. I didn't have to install anything on my device and I've got full InTouch capability right from my browser. Okay. Here's my tank farm. All right. So uh, when I um, close my browser, it disconnects me from my InTouch server. So I'll leave it, and I'm off of InTouch. So you noticed uh, when I did log into the InTouch Access Anywhere server, I had the option to have the InTouch fit to the browser or fit to the screen. So that's an option that you can select. So let's talk about security. Um, of course, everybody should be thinking about security. How do I securely do this? Because we don't want to uh, let people into um, our InTouch server that shouldn't have access. So a couple of uh, security um, concepts that are common in the IT world. This is not specific to Wonderware. This is uh, if you have an IT department, they're going to be familiar with these concepts. And so this is, you know, when you, when you talk to your IT department, you know, say, hey, I need a, a, an, a on a remote desktop server set up with InTouch installed, and I need remote access, what they're going to do is set you up with a, uh, a firewall and a VPN to give you that secure remote access to your server. So that means that unauthorized users are not allowed to get onto your network, not allowed to get onto your server. Only authorized users and authorized devices are allowed to do that. So a virtualized uh, private network or VPN uh, is a device that creates an encrypted tunnel between itself and then a, a keyed partner device across the internet or other insecure channel. So you do typically install a, a VPN and client on your device. Um, some devices have a VPN built into it, um, but they allow you to connect to your VPN device and create a secure network channel. Um, a firewall is a device that um, segregates networks. So you're going to have your plant network, and then you have the internet network. So a firewall um, allows uh, you to separate those networks um, so that somebody from, you know, the outside world, somebody from the internet can't access your uh, plant network. So a firewall does that uh, protection net network segregation where the VPN provides basically a way for you to tunnel through that firewall and get securely onto your, your plant network. And most devices uh, these days have um, uh, firewall and VPN built into it. Uh, so it's a single device that has both the firewall and the VPN capability. So if you're looking for a firewall or VPN, you have some questions on those, feel free to reach out to us and we can help you out with that. Uh, so here's just a basic architecture of a firewall and a VPN. So uh, from the internet, I need to log in from my phone or from my laptop. So I'm on the internet, and so I basically have a VPN client on my device, on my mobile device or my, my laptop, or my desktop. And so I can VPN from the public internet through the firewall and then onto my plant network and access my InTouch Access Anywhere server. So I'm again just um, connecting to my VPN from my device, logging into a web page, and then it starts in touch. So this is a basic network diagram of just a uh, firewall VPN architecture. We have another layer of security called a secure gateway. So for those folks that want another layer of security beyond just the traditional VPN firewall, uh, the secure gateway is included within Touch Access Anywhere, and it gets installed on a separate server than uh, InTouch Access Anywhere. So you can see over here on the left-hand side, we have our InTouch Access Anywhere server running on our SCADA network. And then in the middle, we have a DMZ, a demilitarized zone, which is running our secure gateway. And then over on the right-hand side, we have the um, business network, or we'll say the, uh, the World Wide Web, the internet. And so what a user can do is then log in first to the secure gateway, which is separate from their SCADA network. And some folks will still provide um, VPN capability to the secure gateway. 
uh, that's optional. Um, and then once you authenticate against the secure gateway, then it launches InTouch uh, Access Anywhere running on the SCADA network. Okay, so this is uh, just from an IT cybersecurity standpoint, another level of security, um, the defense in depth strategy um, that um, um, provides another level of authentication or network segregation between your plant network and the, the outside networks. So here's a, a basic network architecture of that. Again, I'm from the internet. I may need to VPN into uh, the secure gateway. The secure gateway is going to provide that same um, uh, in touch access anywhere web page where you have to put in your username and password. Once you put in your username and password, it will then launch in touch running on your, your SCADA server. So notice that your SCADA server is on a net, separate network than your DMZ, which is also a separate network than your, the internet. Okay. Lastly, we're going to talk about uh, the InTouch web client, which is the new capability for accessing InTouch from a web page. Um, it, unlike InTouch Access Anywhere, which is full access to InTouch applications, uh, InTouch web client is um, uh, a read-only environment, and it uh, uh, allows you to access orchestra graphics um, that, um, that may be a part of your InTouch application. Okay, so it's uh, entirely also HTML5 um, web-based. It does not require uh, remote desktop services, um, um, but it is a subset of, of InTouch, so it's useful if you just have some kind of uh, um, um, screens, dashboards, graphics that, uh, that you need access to, but you don't need full operational command and control environment that uh, traditional InTouch offers. We've got a demo here of what that looks like. So here's InTouch Web. We'll go ahead and log into the web page, and I'm going to get a menu, and it's going to show me all of the available um, graphics, orchestra graphics that um, I have available um, to to display. And so you can see, um, if I've got orchestra graphics in my application, I can display those, and I can browse to them using this menu. And again, right now, the current version of InTouch Web is strictly read-only. There's no write-back. You can't control, um, turn anything on or off, uh, acknowledge alarms. But for monitoring or viewing, uh, maybe if I've got uh, some TVs um, in, my, um, uh, in my office, in, um, in the plant that are just displaying some key performance indicators, some production statuses, some, some production metrics, um, it's a great way to um, uh, to display uh, uh, some monitoring-only graphics um, without having to um, have a, a full uh, InTouch RDS server. Okay. So in summary, setting up InTouch Remote Access, um, InTouch Access Anywhere is included with InTouch 2017. Uh, it provides access to InTouch from any device via an HTML5 web browser, and it leverages from Microsoft Remote Desktop Services. And for security, uh, it's recommended to use a, a VPN uh, and firewall uh, and or the InTouch uh, Access Anywhere Secure Gateway. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat, uh, email us, webinars at california.wonderware.com, give us a call, 866-966-3376. Deirdre, do you have any questions in the queue? Hi, Mike. Um, so we had a couple of questions come in. Um, one that just came in um, states, do you need each user to log in once via remote desktop connection to um, italicize in touch before using Access Anywhere, or does only one user need to log in via RDC once? And that was in the chat box. Yeah, sure. So. Um if, if you have each user log in from a remote desktop session, that's just going to ensure that all of the InTouch applications um, uh, show up um, as available InTouch applications um, um, that uh, uh, that they're available to run. So that's just to ensure that. So yeah, having having each user log in once uh, to do the initial setup, initialization, um, to have InTouch access to anywhere um, show uh, the available InTouch applications um, is is best practice. I have um, experience where that's not it's not required in every scenario, um, and and you you could try just um, um, having them launch InTouch access anywhere without. 
doing a remote desktop connection first, and, and they very well might just see, see all of the Intich applications. But if they don't, then you'll know that you need to, to do one initial remote desktop connection from, um, from that user. Um, another question that came in is, what do you recommend as, um, hold on, sorry, uh, it said, what did what do you recommend as a the cell phone or a tablet? We are pretty agnostic when it comes to cell phones and tablets. You know, um, it's it's really going to be. Um, personal preference or your company's preference. So we'll support uh, support anything. Um, you know, uh, some folks prefer iOS, some folks prefer Android. Um, we don't have a bias personally. Um, so it's, that's, uh, it, it, it's really up to your personal preference. Whatever suits, you know, your, your needs is, is going to be, you know, our recommendation. We don't, we don't have a personal preference. Um, another question is, um, does the Access Anywhere Secure Gateway allow you to use HTTPS SSL to connect to your InTouch application? Um, yes. And they put yes. an example there. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So, yes, it uses uh, SSL Secure Socket Slayer and HTTPS, yes. So uh, InTouch Access Anywhere absolutely supports that technology, 100%. Um, and then another question in regards to the phone question. Um, so um, does it include the iPhone or Android? Um, and they say, I know Android is, op is an open source as iPhone isn't. Will one be more secure than the other? Yeah, the, the security on the device is really going to be dependent more so on the, again, the network access to your, your SCADA server. So. Um, you know the the device itself. You know the securing the device is not something that you know is really in the realm of 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 Wonderware or or SCADA. That's you know providing the secure network access is is going to be more on the IT implementation of the the firewall and the VPN, uh, the use of a DMZ. So that's it's going to be independent of the device. So. You know, security on individual operating systems for devices is kind of beyond the 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 scope of what we're what we what we what we uh, are talking about in you know this conversation. Um, Mike, we have another question. Do the screens for the HMI need to be developed for this smaller phone screen? Uh, no, they don't need to be. No, you can use your existing InTouch applications just as they as they exist today, and again, using the uh, uh, node properties inside of your InTouch application to allow Window Viewer to dynamically adjust to the screen resolution uh, will allow the uh, InTouch screen to, um, uh, to 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 grow or to shrink um, based on the, um, the 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 resolution of the device that you're displaying in such application on. So no, there's no need to to change the um, your in touch application if you if you want to keep it um, in its in its um, uh, fully intact state the way that it exists today. Um, also, another question that we have is: Can connection from secure gateway to in touch server be encrypted? Um, for example, showed port. 880, which is normally unencrypted. Yeah, so that is the default port. Um, you can choose whichever port that you want. So that's just the default port. But the the port uh, configuration is, is entirely up to you. So yeah, you can choose an, an encrypted port um, based on you know whichever port that you want to allow uh, in such access anywhere through. Um, and then, does it require specific login credentials? Yeah, it requires your Windows user login credentials. Um, and then um, a couple more questions. Does my SI need to make any changes to the application, or is it something my IT department can take care of? Yeah, so uh, there's there's no changes to the InTouch application that need to be made. It's just the installation of the InTouch Access Anywhere and in installing the um, if you don't already have one, a remote desktop service, a remote desktop server, um, and then you know and then you know 
working with the, um, you know, if you have an IT department or a system integrator to, to set up the um, secure remote access. So there's no changes to your InTouch application. It's strictly just the installation of InTouch Access Anywhere and, and um, setting up the secure remote access. Um, and then one final question. Do I have to design a screen specifically to use with Access Anywhere? Oh, we already covered that one. <laughs> Already. Okay. Right. Yep. Uh, and then um, one last question is: Will there be a log of who connects in for how long to the InTouch access anywhere? Uh, that will that will show up, I believe, uh, in the Windows event logs. Um, I'd have I'd, I'd have to confirm on that. Um, but I believe uh, that is tracked in the Windows event logs, um, a, remote desk, a remote user logging in and logging out. Um, uh, so uh, no, honestly, I have to I'd have to, to to confirm that one. I haven't I haven't looked that up myself. But we can get back to you on that one. Um, well, thank you, Mike. And if anyone would like to review any portion of this webinar. A recording will be available on our website at california.wonderware.com this afternoon. And again, you can find more information about our future webinars on our website. Okay. Thanks, everyone.